Welcome to my look at the Mercedes-Benz GLB 250. I drive it on-road, I drive it off-road. It's a pretty thorough look. Let's go. There's a belief that the hard shift from sedans to SUVs and crossovers in the U.S. is unique to our country. Uh, nope, they're trending all over the globe. It's because vehicles like the Mercedes-Benz GLB 250 are really practical. Getting something useful and upmarket is a twofer. Plus, while roomy inside, this isn't humongous. Some sport utes have outgrown the garages meant to house them. This and the GLA share an architecture. Now, the big difference between the two is the GLB is a little bit longer and can be had with a third row of seating. It starts on the reasonable side, but this being a Mercedes, you're gonna want the Mercedes experience and that means options. As tested, this one's 49.7 and that doesn't include that third row. That would be an extra $850. Go nuts on the extras and the GLB 250 can crest near the $60,000 mark. A devil's advocate, a fully loaded Kia Sorento that's a really well done vehicle and seat six is 44 grand. But for buyers wanting the cachet of this, mainstream brands are a non-starter. The GLB gets a conservative upright look, much like the large GLS, but left in the dryer way too long. The signature line that eyeballs will be drawn to, other than the star, is this bump in the greenhouse. If you like the galaxy blue paint, it's a $750 upcharge. And while this says performance to many, on the 250, it's an AMG line trim package only appearance. The 250 is propelled by a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder that makes 221 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Mercedes specifies premium fuel, adding to the ownership costs. The lever controlling the 8-speed dual-clutch transmission opens up some real estate on the console. That's good because this isn't a huge vehicle. GLB is available as a front driver. 4MATIC all-wheel drive is a $2,000 proposition. On wet days, it's nice to have the extra grip. Various drive modes change the steering weight, throttle response, and transmission mapping. The adjustable suspension is 900 bucks. Outside, the sonic vibe isn't a best or nothing sound. Orally, it's more coarse and diesel-y than many direct injected engines. This GLB is coming up at around 3,900 pounds, so it has enough power to scoot zero to 60 happening in about six seconds, so acceleration is not an issue. The power band is good. Highway merging and passing isn't a problem, but this is not a sporty vehicle. Yeah, it does say AMG, but that's just a trim package. There's the AMG GLB 35 high performance version with 302 horsepower for more giddy up. There's also the GLA that seems to have sharper dynamics to go with its sleeker body design, but no option for that very tight third row. The ride quality is great. The suspension soaks up big bumps. The GLB is extremely comfortable and quiet on the highway too. You would expect that this is a Mercedes. The clattery tone of the four-cylinder heard outside never comes into the cabin. Not all cars are supposed to be performance vehicles, and that's okay. The GLB is comfortable. It coddles the driver. Yeah, it goes around a corner in a controlled manner, but it doesn't compel you to take curves hard. I like the eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. It has nice, decisive shifts. Not super snappy like a DSG, but it's tuned just right for Mercedes. The ride height is elevated, uh, not dramatically. It's appropriate for a sport ute this size. Windows are larger, so visibility is good. Adding the $1,500 panorama glass roof would add some airiness to the space. As far as active electronic safety tech goes, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection is standard kit. But if you want stuff like adaptive cruise control and lane keeping, well, those are optional. You're gonna have to pay extra. 
The $1,700 driver assistance package might be worth springing for if the evasive steering assist or cross-traffic braking assist kept the GLB and its occupants out of just one collision. It's like pre-insurance and it would add to the resale. Fuel economy. The EPA rates the average of the GLB 250 at 26 miles per gallon, which is not bad. And I'm actually seeing better than that. I've been driving this vehicle a lot this week. Like nearly all new vehicles on the market, the GLB 250 has an automatic engine stop start system. This one is just fine on shutdown. Startup is average in refinement. Stuck in traffic, I switched it off, which is easy to do. People that want to tackle severe terrain will gravitate towards a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, Land Rover Discovery, or Mercedes G-Wagon if staying in the three-pointed star family, although that's a lot more expensive. Many GLBs won't ever see a dirt road. Still, it can do far more than most expect. Formatic GLBs come standard with an off-road mode that adjusts the power delivery and stability control to help cross stuff like this downhill speed regulation too. There are off-road gauges that can be called up in the menu. Uh, sorry, forgot to shoot those. GLA and GLB share an interior. Being the least expensive Mercedes SUVs, this cabin doesn't have the cachet found starting with the GLC, which starts at around $5,000 more than the B. There are strong elements and materials, but the overall experience isn't as rich. I feel the $310 ambient lighting package that has adjustable zones is a must-have to keep up appearances. Same goes for the premium package at a little over a grand. It adds these two 10 and a quarter inch screens fused to look like one. The grippy seats, heated in this case, are comfortable for most, though for some, the plastic lever located here can dig into upper calves. Ask my petite wife about that. Cup holders hold securely due to tabs that adjust for small cups of joe or big gulp sodas. It's easy for both driver and passenger to get to stuff inside the console. The user interface, branded MBUX, is excellent and might be a reason to buy a Mercedes. MBX is very good at recognizing casual voice commands using the prompt, Hey Mercedes, my butt is cold. I'm switching on the seat heating. Excellent. And it can get directions for you. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Are there any German restaurants nearby? Here are several German restaurants. Ah, Prost is good. I've been there. Or maybe you just want to be entertained. Hey Mercedes, tell me a joke. Why can't your nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. <laughs> I didn't say dad jokes. The gauge cluster can be configured to a driver's liking using these tiny trackpads. They work well for me, some people are bothered by them. And there's always the traditional way of getting to what you want. The screen has very good touch response and it doesn't wash out in strong sunlight, at least as bright as we get in the cloudy Pacific Northwest. There's also the trackpad, which is better than most and surrounded by shortcut buttons. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. They require a cord. All of the USB ports are the new C-type, so stock up on adapters or buy new cables. It's too bad this doesn't have that optional third row. People would want to see that. I've seen it. I wouldn't go back there. Really, it's for little kids only. We're both five foot nine in this space. It's pretty good. Headroom. Very generous, so are knee, leg, and foot room. The cushions are high enough so that thigh support is good. They might be a little bit on the short side. Door openings, those are big enough so that you can get car seats in and out. And this has one of my favorite features. The seats slide fore and aft so you can max out leg or cargo room, whatever you want. Door pockets, those are average size, good for a bottle of water. No built-in sunshades, you'll have to get aftermarket units. There are two seat back pockets, so kids won't fight over them. Power, oh yes, there is. You can even charge a computer. The seat backs recline, heated seats in the rear, not available on the GLB. The center spine, not too intrusive, so you could put three people across and their feet wouldn't be too crowded. And theoretically, you can get seven people into a GLB, but let's be realistic. You'd want to have four. 
they would be comfortable, that would be the Mercedes experience. As far as design goes, the GLB is pretty low key other than these very shiny parts. The AMG line package at some $2,200 gives this one a slightly different look, but it's not a huge change. I can see opting instead for the panel roof. That big glass panel adds a lot of character to the interior. In-class luxury competitors might be Audi Q3, BMW X1, Cadillac X-T4, Lexus NX, Lincoln Corsair, and maybe Genesis GV70. None of those can be had with a third row, but the GLBs is really only good for very short trips. If you're new to these videos, you might be wondering why I use TP as my standardized trunk measurement metric. Well, part of it is they're about the size of a carry-on suitcase and they're infinitely more humorous. And I think we could all use a good laugh these days, huh? There's a traditional security shade, not just a lightweight piece of fabric, and there's a wind passing on the extra row. The space it would take up is much more usable as storage. It would be great to have a spare. Run-flat tires have their limitations. Small things make the cargo hold useful, all trunks should have these. With no remote releases, it's a reach to drop the backs standing at the rear, either walk around or get road grime off the bumper on your Levi's. That's a solid 62 cubic feet to fill, impressive for a compact ute. Uh, personally, I use the pass-through feature on vehicles often, so I'm happy that this one has it. Chances are the GLB will be pressed into family duty, and with all of the seats filled, there's a very usable 22 cubic feet. And since the space is square, it's efficient. Eight packs of TP is among the best in class. Time to wrap this up with red light, green light. Green light. The GLB 250 is one of the least expensive Mercedes SUVs, but still delivers the brand's expected comfort and quietness. It's roomy and practical, plus the square shape means a lot of cargo will slip through the big wide hatch. The MBUX interface with natural voice recognition is an excellent system among the best. GLB is efficient for a non-hybrid vehicle. I averaged around 28 miles per gallon in mixed driving. Yellow lights? This is a comfortable vehicle. It might not fill the bill for those wanting sporty dynamics. The interior is nice, just not as well polished as Big Brother GLC. There is a third row available, but don't expect adults to even consider sitting there. Red light. It's more expensive than many others. Bang for the buck is not a Mercedes attribute. Since there's a chance it will end up off-road, a spare tire should be on board. The plastic handle that lengthens the front seat cushions will be annoying and uncomfortable for small adults. No doubt the logo on the grill will impress some folks. I picked up a friend at the airport and he felt pampered. Brand image is a tangible benefit for some. Humans are wired that way. The average vehicle goes for $42,000, $43,000 these days. Forty-nine dollars gets you this Mercedes. So you have to ask yourself, do you go with the premium brand or go with a regular brand like Toyota, Honda, Chevy, or Kia and get more value? That's a decision only you can make. So as always, do your research, test drive a wide variety of vehicles, and maybe check in with a therapist for a self-confidence assessment. The Mercedes GLB 250 4Matic gets the job done on and off-road for people all over the world, at least for those willing to pay the price. A bit of a public service announcement that I should have covered a month ago. Wet leaves on the road can be as slippery as ice, so fall is a time to be careful. Just depends on where you live. And while all-wheel drive can be very beneficial off-roading and for traction on wet, slick surfaces, it does nothing to stop you. That's where many drivers get in trouble. The right tires are a huge advantage. Don't overlook those. If you've never experienced snow tires, they're truly awesome. Hope you got something out of my look at the Mercedes-Benz GLB 250 before the rain squalls come. A fun fact, uh, I think we all know that this company is credited for inventing the automobile. But did you know that Carl Benz was the first person to have a driver's license? Yeah, and his wife Bertha is widely credited for being the first person to take a road trip, 130 miles with two kids. Apparently, it scared people along the way because 
they had never seen a car because it was the first. Thanks for watching. Remember, every Tuesday I post a car review video, so subscribe, all right? That's Driven. I'm Tom Bulk. Let's talk about shopping. I have a price quote service and it helps to support this channel, but the bad business person in me will encourage you to use any of those services like cars.com because I want you to get the lowest price. It's what I'm all about. Now, if you're not test driving at least three different vehicles, you're only cheating yourself. I know it's difficult these days with the chip shortage. There aren't a lot of vehicles, but hey, do what you can. Get the vehicle that you deserve.